Sunday, February 2nd, 2012. I have a silent 8 millimeter colored film taken by a B-17 coal pilot who served in Italy during World War II. At the same time I served there as a B-17 tail gunner. We were in the same outfit, the uh, Drill 1st Bomb Group, 32nd Bomb Squadron. I didn't know him, but somehow, uh, after all these years, he's surprised me with a phone call, uh, left a message, and I'm going to re return the call. And maybe we can uh, put some stuff together. Goodbye. Hi, Jack Levin. Yeah. Hi, Vince Parker. Returning your call. Who is this? Vince Parker. You and I were in Italy together. Uh, Hi, Vince. How Thanks. you doing? It's been a while, hasn't it? Yes, it has. You know, I've just seen that silent film that you put together uh, when you were over there in 44, 45, uh, taken by you in Italy. It brought back so many memories. Yeah. I looked at it this way. I'm going to show it to some great grandkids. You know, I'm going to rec I'm recording you, uh, uh, Jack, and uh, Kevin Callahan does DVDs, and he he's going to try to put words to your film, and we'll get a copy back to you for your grandkids. Great, great, great. So what we're saying Wonderful. here, we might be able to put together what we're saying here. So I've got kind of an outline. Uh, we were in the same bomb group, uh, the thrill yes. thrill first. 32nd Bomb Group, Bomb Squadron. 32nd Squadron that we called the 32nd Air Force, remember? Yeah. Now, <laughs> where were we stationed? Foggia. Right. Uh, Lucera, was it, outside of Foggia? Takeoff was over, over Fort Lucera. Okay. Uh, now, where did you get your training in the States? I mean... I went to phase training in Dyersburg, Tennessee when we came together as crew. How about you? Uh, Lincoln, Nebraska was where, where our crew was organized. Okay. Then how did you get overseas? Well, I graduated from Douglas, Arizona, uh -huh. and they sent a bunch of us to, uh, to Randolph Field for uh, structural instructor school. Okay. to you, huh? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, from there, we I think that was Joya. Okay, Joya. All right. I know that's in southern Italy, right? There we went to, uh, they took us by truck to uh, Foggia. Okay. And then, then you were ready to fly. 
We're ready to fly. Now, did you have to put your own tents together? I noticed those nice tents there in your film. No, we didn't. We took over tent 121, and the tent that we took over was by it was inhabited by a crew that went down that day. Oh no! Went down on the last mission to Ploesti. Oh my gosh! What? So we never had to go to Ploesti. When did you land there? When was it? You start in Italy. Sometime in June, I don't remember the day. Oh, you were there long before I was there in, in uh, I landed in October. Yeah. In At Naples in a boat, you know. Yeah, uh-huh. So you started there in June. Well, then when did you get out of there? When the war, you, were you there when the war was uh, over? April, May. About May of, May of uh, 45. Uh-huh. And uh, they sent me to a... Fort George Wright Convalescent Hospital, for some reason, I never uh, understood, understood that reason. Well, you know, maybe I have a reason for you. I noticed a, a, a picture in that film of, of you getting the Distinguished sir, sir, Flying Cross. Yeah. And that was, you're right, was that you up front to receiving the award in the film? Yes, it was. With a little uh, wispy mustache? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, behind you, to the left in that film, is my pilot, Thomas. I remember Clancy. it. I, I see it. Through. Thomas yeah, Clancy. Yeah. Tall, good-looking guy. Yeah, Tom Clancy was his name. Uh -huh. I, I don't know if you remember him. As, there's so many of you guys, you know, flu groups and squadrons. And, but he was there this, in that same picture. It really. And what, was he in the 32nd? He was in the 32nd, and he was uh -huh. a, a pilot. And he's in that same picture with you when you got... That was General Lawrence that was awarding that Distinguished Flying Cross. Uh, yeah. And now, why did you get that? Can you tell me? You did something special. Well, we had a, uh, a, a waist gunner. My waist gunner couldn't fly that day because he was drunk. Oh, no. He was just too scared to fly. Uh-huh. And we had a, we had a substitute. Okay. And that substitute was the only fatality we had on our missions. Okay. We had injuries, but no fatalities. Uh-huh. And that fellow, that was, his, you'll see in the pictures, I put trying on a, a helmet. Uh-huh. Is that the one with that the holes a, in it? That was the helmet he had. Oh. And when he was injured, my waist gunner told me about it, so I got up and went back to the uh, waist gunner, put my oxygen on and went back and took care of him and dressed him and did as much as I could. And then I realized that he, we were going to get him to a, not a first aid station, but a major hospital, uh -huh. which we which we did. We took him down to a bari. Uh -huh. And when they, they told us that he had a chance of surviving, when we got back to our base, uh, they phoned and said that uh, he had passed away. So we got a we got a captain's jeep and uh, and drove down there for the uh, for the uh, funeral. Uh huh. And that was it. So for some reason, I don't know why, they decided that I should get the DFC. Well, I know why. I, I know because I know how tough it was up there sometimes. And yeah, you bring back memories that uh, that we both shared, and uh, uh, well, then how many missions were you able to fly, uh, Jack? Well, there's two stories. One is thirty. Uh, we flew our fiftieth mission. I flew my fiftieth mission. Okay. And uh, by that time, I was uh, I was first pilot because Jake Jacobson had finished his missions about a month earlier. Okay. And I took I took over the crew. Then you flew the left seat. And I flew the left seat the okay. last uh, 10 missions or so. Uh-huh, great. And, uh, it was I mentioning then? Yeah, okay, then you took that training, and then you took the left seat and flew how many missions? Oh, well, here's what happened. I came home from my 50th mission. Uh-huh. And the, cur the, ca the colonel called us in, called me in, and said, you got to tell the crew you're going to have to fly to 35 sorties. That's when they changed. Oh, sure. Sure. If you count sorties, I flew 35 sorties. If you count missions, 
It was 64. <laughs> oh, you know, I was in that same, uh, you know, they were really upset when that changed. And I flew 24 sorties and 41 missions. And I was, uh, and uh, I was there when the war was over, but you made a full tour. No, almost a full yeah. tour. Yeah. Yeah. And because I had the DFC and uh, all the air medals, I was able to fly back. Oh. Going back on a, on a troop ship. Oh. So uh, they, I was able to, they flew me to uh, Naples. Uh-huh. And from there to uh, Casablanca. Oh, wow. And from there over to uh, over to the tip Belém, Brazil. Okay. On the tip of South Africa, South America. There. I noticed all those signs in Brazil, and you really got around. Yeah, that was on the way home. Right. Now you got to Naples and Rome and all those good places when you were there. Yeah, that's right. I was uh, got to Naples, and there uh, there's a picture of a of a. Of a road that goes up the hill between buildings that's that, that's the via chiaia it's a famous famous uh famous road there okay and uh that was it got home and ended up uh well you got r and r's to those places rest and rehabilitation i'll bet no r and oh well, here's a funny thing r and r a fellow named, buddy named John Hedquist. He was a, uh, a, a navigator. Uh -huh. He flew with us sometimes. And we got orders, and I have a copy of the orders, of four, four days in Rome. Oh. Rest camp, four days. Oh, that's not very much time. Right. But here's what happened. It was, as you know, it was a bad winter. And it rained and rained and rained, and no fields around Rome could take one of our B-17s. Oh. So we had to stay there. Um, we had to stay there 13 days. Oh, boy, that was good duty. <laughs> <laughs> With all those pretty girls and that vino. <laughs> we had a great time. I noticed in there it was a picture of a Red Cross girl. Was she special for you? Oh, you mean Mom, uh, Mom Hunter? Yeah. Yeah, Mom Hunter was, uh, was in charge of the Foggia... Uh, uh, officers club. Okay. And uh, and and we all loved her. She was great. Oh, you know, that's so true. And you know, when we landed from a mission, we'd go to that truck. I noticed the truck there, and we got coffee and donuts. And, yeah. They didn't miss one mission. Every single mission we came on to ARC, uh -huh. had coffee and donuts for us. Did you get a couple shots of whiskey? Uh, like. They yeah, but you know we didn't we didn't drink it all the time. Okay. We took, we, we took our own bottle, and sometimes we took one shot and put it in the bottle, and and then uh, we so when they told us we had to fly to 35 sorties, we decided we're going to finish that liquor because we may not come back. Come back from the next one. Well, <laughs> you so you chose to our. <laughs> Then had uh, the crew had uh, beer, uh -huh. and we had the, it, it, the the bottles we had was a mixture of scotch, bourbon, rye, because it, it wasn't always the same liquor with, with, that we got from the. Uh, because you saved them, and you, they were different. Oh yeah, there were always every. We maybe had scotch a couple of times and bourbon another time, so it was all mixed. You know, I noticed you horsing around with a bunch of bottles, and you guys was was that yeah. some of your stuff or what? Was that Italian? That was that was the stuff that we had gotten uh, from uh, when we got home from the missions. Well, you were wasting some really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I remember uh, some of the things there on the base. It was a wet and cold, and it snowed so much. January 1st, we had a bad snowstorm. 40, That's right. 45. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But most of the time, we just mired in mud, and we go down to the... Hey, listen. There was a, a latrine outside of my tent with a funnel where a guy could step up to and take care of his needs. I saw one of those in there, I think. The first day that we got to the... Uh, when we checked in and checked into that... One, uh, tent 121. Uh -huh. I saw a fellow 
Darn if I can't remember. Uh, 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 damn it, I can't remember his name. Anyway, I said, where's the John? He says, <laughs> over there, and he points to the funnel. Yeah. I said, no, that's, that's not the He said, yeah, that's, that's, that's the John. You, so, so I went over and started using it, and just that time, a truck of nurses went by on the road. Uh -huh. They were headed for a party <laughs> out at the uh, dance uh, pavilion there, you know. Uh -huh. And then I was sure he was kidding me. But anyway, it, it, it shows a picture of him at that photo. Okay. I, I, me too. I noticed he's leaning over. I, of course, I knew what he was doing because I had been there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and yeah. then there was a big bag. We called it a Lister bag. I don't know if you... That, that was on the way back. That was at uh, the airport outside of Casablanca. Okay. Okay. And that's where the, that's where the water was. That's right. All right. And the only drinkable water on the base. Yeah, and even then it tasted like canvas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! You know, uh, there was we had so much fun. You know, between missions, at least we could relax. We didn't. Uh, I used to not envy those guys on the ground uh, when we went over, and when we landed, we got our lives back, and we could yeah. go go to our tents and write letters and have fun. And, yeah, and uh, you'll notice we were, I was frying some chicken there. Okay. <laughs> and that wasn't chicken. Oh. Somebody came by and sold us some uh, fowls. Uh-huh. And being city guys, we didn't know what they were. They were not chickens. They were bantam roosters. Oh. oh. When we knew, and, and we, I bought them because we were going to have eggs. It was meat. <laughs> But with no eggs from Bantam Roosters, so we ended up frying them. Well, now, that was a woman there and a couple Italian boys that you were changing things with, their oh, mother? That was the, uh, the grandmother that yeah. was picking olives. Uh -huh. So she and the kids were picking olives uh, uh, from the trees. Because we lived in an olive grove. That's right. Yeah. And you know, they see that big, uh, uh, those speakers, the bitch, we call them bitch boxes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Those bitch boxes and New Year's Eve, somebody shot the hell out of those bitch, bitch boxes with their 45s. And the next day, the colonel said that should have been done a long time ago. Uh huh. Okay, I, I remember. A, I remember those. Did you go to Did you go to the uh, New Year's Eve party? Uh, no. You, you see, you might have gone to an officers, the officers club. I was going to the NCO club. You know, this was this was on base. On base, huh? I didn't yeah. go. No? Well, anyway, we the the colonel uh, gave us uh, gave a party. He had uh, some friends, and he had collected an orchestra. Uh huh. And we were uh, singing, uh, you know, songs. Uh, and all of a sudden, the the uh, orchestra started playing White Christmas. Oh my gosh. Well, there was a dry eye in the in the place. Oh my gosh! And that was a oh. really was something. Oh yeah, what everything was... got real quiet. Do you remember the colonel's name? Yeah, Colonel. Uh, was it Holmes? Not Holmes, uh, Colonel. Uh, damn, I'll think of it. One of them got killed on the way to in a storm on the way to Naples one day. I don't know if you were no, there. Holmes was one of the was the last. CO that we had. Okay. Ed, Edwin F. Harding was the oh. first CO. I remember. He was, a, he was a major at the time. I remember that. Don, did and you know? Got, then he got the BLC, and I think that he transferred out when he was an LC. Okay. Now, I'm, did you know uh, 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 Brensinger, Joe Brensinger? Yes, I did. Did you? We called, sure. we called him Fearless Joe Brensinger because we went over the target three times on Christmas Day on Brooks, and he had to be leading the group. <laughs> I was on that mission. You were? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I, look at how close we were to each other, but, of course, I was an enlisted <laughs> man, and that was terrible. You know, bomb, we'd hit the IP, we'd go down, and I'd wait for bombs away, and it didn't happen. We went around again. <laughs> Yeah, we I, went I don't remember particularly, but I was on that mission. Oh, I'll be darned. Well, we bombed Brooks and Blackhammer and Ruland and places nobody oh, yeah. ever heard of. Yeah. 
I bet I you. Did, I don't think I missed one of those missions. By the way, did you see that uh, uh, P-51 on my left wing? Yes. Okay, what happened? That was black and white. It was the only black and white portion of the movies. Uh huh. And uh, we we were we had we left the uh, squadron because we only had three engines. Oh. We couldn't and we couldn't keep up. Okay. So we were still over enemy territory. Okay. And this P-51 came up on our left wing. Uh huh. And he radioed to us. He, he asked us, Does, "Do we want him to?" Stay with us for a while. Oh, we yeah. said you don't have to ask twice. <laughs> yeah, you're over enemy territory. <laughs> for about a half an hour. Okay. And we finally got to. Uh, we finally uh, read it to him that thanks a lot. We appreciate your your tagging along with us. And and uh, we were by that time we were oh pretty close to the Adriatic. Hey, you know you have to be awfully close to ninety to be a pilot, because uh, I was young, but... Uh, I'll be a pilot, I'll be 90 in August. Okay, <laughs> you sure sound good for that. Oh, I feel, I really feel, I'm still playing golf twice a week. Oh my gosh. Are I'm, you... hitting, I'm still hitting the ball pretty good, not, not as far as I used to, and my handicap isn't very good anymore. Oh yeah. Well, but that... I'm still playing. Well, let me ask you, are you any of your crew members left? Yes, uh, one of them, my waist gunner, Bob Stralley, is not, not very long for this world. Okay. But my, orig my original pilot, Jake Jacobson, Robert D. Jacobson, uh -huh. Jake Jacobson, we called him, uh -huh. uh, is still, uh, he's, a, he's on a small ranch that he's got a, in, uh, outside of Portland, Oregon. Okay. And he's still riding the... They tracked her around the property. Uh huh. And let's see. Uh, uh, one, two, three. I think there's one more of us, and I don't remember who did. I'd have to look at my my correspondence. Did you have any reunions? We had a, we had the three or first thirty second reunions, and then they went to three or first reunions, and then they weren't enough of us to have any reunions anymore. Oh, to the to the national one. Yeah, didn't go. To, yeah, no, it wasn't the national. We didn't go to the national. Oh. We, I stopped going when they when they uh, when they had the three or first group. Okay. Reunions. Okay, and uh, so then uh, there's still two or three of you left, but it, it, yeah, it, there's three of us. And uh, one, not for very long. Okay. Well, I was, uh, I was the youngest one, and I'm the only one left. And, oh, uh, really? Yeah. I was uh, uh, 19 when I had four days into my 19th birthday when I flew my first mission. Huh. And that was to Vienna, and that was a tough target. You went there. <laughs> <laughs> you went to well, Vienna. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I go through a, a marshalling yard, <laughs> I have memories <laughs> because it, uh, Vienna, Vienna was a marshalling yard target there. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, then we usually bombed between 25 and 28. Is that right? Oh, yeah. We were up at, uh, we got, I got as high as almost 30,000 feet. Oh, my gosh. In to Munich. Uh-huh. And that day... We saw over on our right wing, it wasn't close, it was miles away, a, uh, something, it was a, it was a rocket we found out later. Okay. Went right past us, uh, out of sight, uh, to the high. And then I read a book by, I think it was Werner von Braun. Uh-huh. That day of that mission, they were testing rockets. Oh, my gosh. Did you did you see ever see the 262? When I didn't even know it was there. You know, my uh, great grandsons took me to a movie the other night, uh, Red Tails. Yeah, right. That's the uh, Tuskegee group. Yeah, I saw that. Go ahead. And uh, they they had uh, combat with uh, with 262s. I didn't think that there were that many available around. Listen, there is so much inaccuracy and in things. You and I watch this stuff, and we, we yell out sometimes. That's not the way it was. Yeah. Yeah. And in that the formation, flying and the uh, the 
the uh, because the Tuskegee three thirty second. Uh huh. They were with us on a lot of our missions. Uh huh. You know, they were on about seven of mine. I I got all their missions, and, and you know, so I saw one red tail go by one team, a P fifty one. I didn't know there was a black guy in there. I found out about it after the war. How about you? Did, well, you, did you have? You say you have the schedule of the three thirty second. Uh, I oh, on on their February missions. That's the only one I got. Do me a favor, send a, send whatever you have oh. to me. Okay. I'd sure appreciate it because I don't I, I I'm just guessing when I talk about. Yeah. Uh, I saw. Thirty second. You didn't see your your. Uh, uh, you didn't see these guys. They were up above, so they could come down and help you. They needed speed when they came in. Yeah, I do have some pictures of some of P-38s flying off in the distance. Uh huh. I see their, you can see their uh, twin tails. Yeah, you can see that on the film. I think. Yeah. 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 And then there was. I think I have a picture of a squadron of P-51s. I'm not sure about it because they're pretty far away. Most of our escort were 38s. You know, uh, I had a friend of mine in the field over, it was a 38 pilot, with a buddy of mine at home. And I'd go over there and he'd say, Parker, I'm still in the sack when you're halfway to the target. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when we started out, the, the P-51s couldn't go very far with us. But then they got the, the new uh, gas tanks. Yeah. And then they were able to go clear to the target with us. Did you but write? If, they couldn't get as far as Brooks, though. No, no. Some of those missions, I think my longest was about nine and a half. That's right. Yeah. But that was a long time and on oxygen most of the time. Yeah. And you had it tough up there, Flans. Formation. And you'd probably change off you guys, you know, flying wing. Yeah. And, you know, I'll never forget this, and it was in the movie, too. After the bombs were dropped, uh, there, there were lots of guys who were saying, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that was the phrase that everybody used, let's get the hell out of here. It, and we'd dive off one way or the other. You'd, we'd make and, a diving, diving turn to the left and then try and form up again, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't always easy. No. Yeah. But that was when we, we left our formation to take... Uh, take our wounded to waste gunner home. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and we, we had uh, one engine shot out. Uh-huh. So we had to leave the formation because we couldn't keep up. Sure, and they were very... We, we dropped down from altitude, and we were lucky. We were lucky that, uh, that the Jerry's didn't, didn't see us. Right. Uh, darn lucky, and go home alone over enemy territory. Yeah. And sometimes we had vapor trails, and, and uh, oh boy, and that was a key. Uh, they could look up there, and they know, hey, there's a, a B-17 up there all by itself, and they just have to go up and take care of it. Did you see in the movies something that not very many pilots were able to see? That circular rainbow? No. Look at it again. All right. You'll see a circular rainbow with the. The image of the uh, B-17 right in the middle of it. Okay, you took several uh, sunset pictures there, I noticed. Yeah, you know, the sunset's always good color. Yeah. And those pictures are in Kodakolor, I mean, uh, Kodachrome. Okay. My, my late wife worked at the Hollywood Film Studios, and she was able to get 8-millimeter Kodachrome. Okay. And those, uh, and the, those, on my film is still as good as it was when I took it. Well, now you had this camera with you. It was your camera. Did you come over with it? It was a little eight millimeter uh, movie camera. Okay. Did you take and any? As I said, I, I ran out of the film, right out of the color, when I took those pictures of that 51 that came up on our left wing. Now, did you get any? Now, that was something that was not a... a, a was not something that was uh, easy to do. It wasn't simple because the Cherries had had gotten B-17s and re-outfitted them uh -huh. and, and with their own crew and sent them up and, and they get in the middle of a formation and started to shoot everybody down. Yeah. So yeah. When this guy came up on our wing, 
he, he couldn't be sure who we were, and we couldn't be sure he, who he was. Did you have a way of communicating? Did you have a code word that you were got in briefing that you could identify an aircraft and break silence or whatever? Uh, probably, but I don't remember that. Okay. All I know is just talking with him. Uh-huh. Any, now, uh, isn't that interesting? Uh, so, did you have you written a lot of this down, or have you written your story? I haven't, I haven't written it. I made some notes, but I haven't written it. Have you? Have you? I should do it. I should go through the film uh -huh. and make and make more notes. Well, now, did, uh, right now, you're probably telling me as much or more than because you and I did it together. We were part of it. We understand the right way to approach it, the questions and stuff. That's right. You're absolutely right, and I, I think you may be the only other guy, other than some of the guys on my crew, uh -huh. that uh, that I can talk to and make sense with. You know, you know, forty years after the war, I got a call from my navigator. I couldn't believe it. I thought he died. We were in a terrible plane crash. Uh, we we ran into five forty sevens on the base and burned up all those planes and my guys were, it was a bad situation. He calls me, I didn't think he'd made it. It inspired me to search for my crew and I had a reunion in my home here in Stillwater and I put out tape recorders. And Jack, there's no way to explain to anybody but you how we felt about each other. Yeah. What we'd been through. And uh, You're absolutely right in. Yeah. And you know, we don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. But just being together is, is a wonderful feeling. Yeah, it, I haven't I haven't seen any of my crew now for a few years. Uh huh. We had uh, yeah. The last uh, reunion we had was in uh, Las Vegas. Uh huh. And I think that probably was about 20 years ago. Okay, so no one's ever recorded you. No. And 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 did you write down uh, these experiences at all? No, I haven't. Well, yes, I should have, but I haven't. Well, listen, this Kevin Callahan is kind of a wizard uh, with uh, this type of stuff, and he's going to take this interview that we've had and try to match it up with your film and then get it back to you. Then your grandchildren are going to really know what happened and what, what was going on. I really appreciate getting, rid of, getting yeah. what he, yeah. he writes. Yeah, and then, uh, so, Grandpa was there, and the reason that they're free is because of all the grandpas in the world. <laughs> but Jack, yeah, I guess. you don't know how how wonderful this was talking with you and sharing well, these. I was pretty young at the time too. I was born in '22, and here we were over there in '44. Yeah. So I was uh, I was uh, I got over there on my 20th, 21st birthday, not 22, because I got got over there before August, when I became 22. Okay. And then uh, you, my oldest guy was uh, 23, the navigator, and I was the youngest. Uh, uh, just turned 19 on my first mission. Our, our navigator Ray Walrath was our oldest guy. Uh huh. He, he passed away first, but his wife is still living, oh. and she travels around the country with the kids. Uh huh. We get a we get a we get a Christmas letter, a Christmas letter every year. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, our, our days are numbered. They say a thousand of us are dying a, a day. Well, I don't like that statistic. <laughs> <laughs> but what can we do? We yeah. we lived at a good time, didn't we? You know, we really did. It, come to think of it, we really did. You know, didn't worry about missions. We were a little apprehensive, apprehensive about going out. Mm -hmm. But I don't think... Guys never really showed it. No. Oh, so one, one thing that happened to me, uh, we were on a mission and uh, I felt my face get cold. Uh-huh. And, and the uh, piece of flak went through a windshield in front of me. Uh-huh. And I thought, my God, my face is all bloody. So I reached my hand up to my face and it wasn't bloody, but it was frost from my windshield. <laughs> You know, I, I have I have that piece of flak still. It wasn't horrible going through that flak field, and we couldn't avoid it. You know, the bad thing, flak was one thing, but the bad thing was those box barrages. Where they, they, we were on the bomb run, 
they knew our speed, yep. our altitude, mm -hmm. everything precisely, and they set up that box barrage right in front of us, and we had to fly through that. Yep, the field that of was yep. a bad flag. Fle a field of flyer, and we couldn't avoid it. That's did, right. Did you wear your flak suit? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> crawl up inside my helmet. <laughs> and, and then I would, yeah, well you had steel, the, the, the seat behind you was steel, wasn't it? Wait. Yeah. Yeah. And did you use a chest pack? I think you did and put it underneath the seat maybe. Uh, Parachute. No, I sat on a, I sat on the, uh, oh, on the, uh, a seat pack. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, okay. Okay. I think, yeah, now that, I don't, no, hell, I don't remember. Well, yeah, well, one way or the other, you had a parachute. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it, uh, it was so long ago, and uh, so much has happened since, and uh, we're sure lucky to live in this country. You're absolutely right. And I, this is a very, very good call from you. I really appreciate it. And, I haven't spoken to anybody like this for quite a few years. Yeah, and I, Jack, I feel the same way. There's a certain something about this that nobody else would understand. You're right. <laughs> and, now, and now I'm getting a little emotional, but that's the way the world is sometimes. Yeah, you know, we're going through seeing that movie, The Red Tails. Uh huh. Uh, there were a couple of scenes in that were really became very emotional for me. Uh huh. It's Have you seen it? Yes, I did. And uh, some, sometimes something will grab you, just like when you and I talk. But you know, in that movie, they were talking with their oxygen mask on, off, you know, in the opening scenes when you look down in the fighter. Yeah. But they were at low altitude, I suppose, and they had to show it that, that kind oh, of... Oh, yeah, yeah. They, A little bit of Hollywood there. Uh, well, good. listen, you don't know how much fun this has been. <laughs> and you... Uh, People will touch down every year or sooner. Yeah, make it sooner. <laughs> good talk. Oh, good talking to you, and I'll send you some stuff. I, I did too. We're going to try to put something together for your grandkids. And uh, I have, you have my email address, and I have yours. Okay. So we should be in touch. We will be. Thanks again, and have a good day. Bye bye. Soldiers medal and a lot of members. It's been 41 years since Clancy's crew have seen each other. As Debbie Bloom reports, their reunion in Stillwater this weekend may be their most successful mission yet. Vanilla wafers that taste just like gasoline, remember? Although members of this bomber crew are gathering this weekend in Stillwater, they might as well be back at the base in Folgi, Italy. The fighting 15th Air Force, well, part of it, is reunited after 41 years. Vince Parker worked to bring them together. Well, there's 10 fellows on a crew. I found five, two were dead, two we can't find, and one couldn't make it because of illness, you know. The men have flown here from New York, Oregon, Virginia, and Montana. Back in 1945, they shared the same tent for 11 months. David and Alan took the same plane together to Minnesota for the reunion. On their last flight together, Alan saved David's life. But the last mission I flew was down here and I quit flying. And I was April 12, 1945, the day that President Roosevelt died. So I'll never forget that day. The crew's plane had been shot by the Germans. They landed at their home base with two of their plane's engines burning. They crashed into some C-47s near the runway, and David was badly hurt. And I yelled to Alan. I said, Alan, give me a hand put, putting out these fires. And he came running over, threw me on the ground, and rolled me around and put out the fire. Clayton didn't even know David was still alive, which made for a great thrill at the Twin Cities International Airport. And so when he walked up to me in the airport, uh, I couldn't believe it. And it was just a great feeling to, to know he's here. <laughs> oh, I hope that's not that's the last thing I've done. So this is... Did you see this? The bond that was formed between these men cannot be broken. And although only five of Clancy's crew are present here today, they have enough spirit for all ten. 
and we lived as a family, and we were a close family, and I think we're still just about as close. In Stillwater, Debbie and Bloom, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. These are my guns, and you were able to uh, keep your shoot on the whole mission, or did it fit? What I would do is I would put it on one uh, game door to side, and I did that to keep my flax suit here. Mm -hmm. But I had it on. Oh yeah, you didn't have flax. <laughs> no, 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 and uh, it was simple. No, I don't, no, I can't even do the ladders. <laughs> well, you're still a thin guy. Yeah. Getting me oh. in there is another story, especially through the bomb bay. Being my head on that thing four <laughs> times yesterday. Yeah. Well, they probably didn't have air conditioning units in, in back then, did they? No. <laughs> well, it was cold up there, 50 below zero. Oh, yeah, you had your own natural air conditioning. I don't know what to grab here. Lucky I'm young. <laughs> no. Maybe I can use a hand. Is there somebody up there? I forgot that it was this small. Oh, yeah. Wow. Bombay. It is tight in here. Well, let's see. You betcha. Yeah. High Clancy, High Woods, that's the best. <laughs> and the engineer stood right here. He did. Yeah, and he okay. stepped up here into that upper turret. Oh. How high was that seat? That seat must have been about this high then. The seat where he was? Yeah, for that turret. You need no, help you know, I don't think he. Yeah, he had to get his head in there. Sure. Right. Yeah. You need help getting out in the lead. And uh, the most valuable guy on the aircraft was the engineer. Even the pilot would admit that. He knew everything. Okay. Right. Yeah, he could fly right seat. And, and uh, okay. he took a little extra training, see. And uh, my, my uh, engineer was my best friend. He was constantly getting bombs out or slicing cables or putting out a fire or whatever it was. <laughs> and uh, putting out a fire, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he was a. There's a coal pilot has some switches. I think there's some uh, CO2 over here in the right wing. That's where they. Okay. Yeah, uh, that uh, you can push a button and it would maybe throw some CO2 to the stir. Ash, engine, oil filters. I don't know if they're still there or not. Okay. I'm not oh, somebody, oh, I'm gonna move up here. I guess there's somebody here. Come in. <clears throat> you can stay up here. Yeah, you can stay up here if you want. Yeah, you know, I want to see something here. Where the, where's the fuse box? Where's the fuse box that was on the bulkhead here? Maybe they updated it. the landing it. gears and stuff? Huh. Uh, might be behind that. Is that panel open right yeah, there? Yeah, it, it, uh, well, wait a minute. There they are. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My engineer <laughs> wanted to make me assistant engineer one time. It's kind of a joke because I'm the tail gunner, see? Ah, okay. So, so he opened this fuse box, took out a fuse or two, and, and then uh, we shut it, showed me how to crank up a wheel in case of, you know, one of these. So on the takeoff, we left the hard stand, and we went down to get in position, and Clancy hit the brakes and he didn't work. So he fired up two and three, and so he wouldn't hit that bomber ahead of him. There's a little dip there. We ran into another bomber. Just that we hit, our wing hit a guy and he was on you know, number four or one, whatever way that, and if he fell off that deal, guess what? They did, oh, they really had a big, I got a, I got stuff I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. Who they interrogated, this in a Clancy, they had to make him do another ride, and, you know, because of this and stuff. Well, my engineer wrote a story about that. He said, when I made Parker, the assistant engineer, he forgot to shut the door on the fuse belt and shorted it out. <laughs> and that's, that's all in the, and nobody knew that that's what happened. They just thought that, uh, so what they did, they changed it. Instead of metal, they changed it to to, to this right here. Oh. We, we actually changed the design of the, the design airplane. The design of the B-17 we were responsible huh. And I've got that story you may want to get Wow, into. that's great. All stuff like that happened all Look at all, I don't know how people keep track of all this. All this no, there's gauges, a, and you had to have three guys, I suppose, to... There, there's a... Uh, 275 miles an hour uh, is, is the danger line. There's a, should be on the 
Should be a red, red, red line on there. On the airspeed indicator? Yeah, on the airspeed Where indicator. Where is it? Where is it? Just a second, RPM, RPM. It's over there. Oh, airspeed over yeah, there, yeah. and there's a red line at 275. See, it's 275. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, there's also an emergency bell at the pilot's knee. It used to be anyway, and it has to be the same. Uh -huh. And he uh, kept telling us, don't jump out till you hear the emergency bell, and he could just click it, see? Uh, we never heard it, but we thought we were going to. <laughs> well, you, you didn't. You didn't. weren't in the right spot to hear it because they didn't wire it up. <laughs> See, it, the bell didn't reach the, the tail. No. I... <laughs> Maybe you heard me talking about it. I don't know. It, it, the compartment was there, but the circuitry didn't get there. And I don't think the ball turret guy could have, could have uh, read no. it. Yeah. The ball turret guy, he couldn't even get out, could he? Or is that the other? Is that one of the other bombers where they actually get in on the ground and no, can't he, get out? No, he'd get off in the air. He, he'd get okay. in and out. Yeah, he never got in. He would open it up on the ground and maybe do some things, see. Okay. But you, what you do, uh, you crank it up in emergency, because it was electrical, see. And, and uh, the radio guy was in charge of it in case of a problem. And so uh, I rode the ball several times in you know, trainings. Mm -hmm. So you, there were some handles over your head, and there were some push buttons for your guns. And, you, and uh, there was so much crap in there that visibility wasn't as good as you'd think. Mm -hmm. There was a bulletproof glass down here, a round one. You see that on the end of it. Yeah. And maybe the tail gunner would say, 5.30 low, you know. And so then he'd go to that position because he couldn't see that, see. All sure. the housing. And then the hand charge, uh, there were a lot of pulleys in there to get the shell and the gun and stuff like that. So uh, so what you would do, you'd go like, and you'd come up and you'd open two winglets and throw the door open and then you'd step out of the ball. To get to get into the plane, okay, and then you drop it and re do it. And if you had trouble, if the radio man was around or if he wasn't wounded, you, could, you know, is it hot in here? It is. <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's keep moving. With all this hot air going through. The... Oh, yeah. Watch your head, man. Well, I see so many things. We always bombed between 25 and 28,000. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, was there a strategical reason for that? I'm sure there is. Well, you couldn't get through here with your parachute. No. There they are, 500 pound bomb. Yeah. So this is a 500 pound. No, that's yeah, a hundred yeah. pounder, yeah. Isn't, isn't it? On the you 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 had 500 pounders. They yeah. only, they only have 100 pounders in there. Is that here. what it says? Yeah. Uh, the others. You had a bigger bomb. Yeah. Well, we had the uh, uh, six. We had 12. Then we got one, two, three, four, five. They can put 12, 500 pound bombs in there. Wow! Well, you guys were, had to fit through here. <laughs> yeah. I'm just barely getting through some of these spaces. See all this stuff here? Uh -huh. What is that, radio? Or? Uh, well, that took, this is the radio over here, and some of those other instruments. And there's mm -hmm. where the flight jamming equipment was. Oh. Yeah, and we sat, we didn't have these chairs, you know, this is for people flying. Yeah. We'd sit in crash position that day when we when we crashed in on my ball cutter. Got the Purple Heart sitting in my lap. Huh. We crashed right into all of that when we went forward. And uh, I've got the story on that thing. So read it for you. Oh, they got uh, some kind of tape recorder. Oh, here's the ball. Yeah, here's the ball. Faust. Uh, Faust was there. Faust was a, a great singer. He looked like a pugilist. We, uh, all the cartridges dropped on the floor, empty, you know. Uh huh. And uh, this was the. Uh, yeah, this, these are. The, they didn't have this kind of a sight on this gun when I was there. They had it maybe a compensating sight. Huh. You, you pick up the the, the Was this like a later sight or something? Yeah, or? it was, uh, and I didn't have a sight like that, so. The, the oil buffer units back there. Now, I know nothing about 50s. I never had any training on those. Yeah. What, what, what did you have to be careful of? Well. This is just to get the, the shell into the, yeah, yeah. the thing, and then you cleaned it up with opening this? Yeah, when you open this, to uh, get the shell in, mm -hmm. and hand charge the gun, it would come up, 
No, and then you put it down, and there was a lever that put it in here. And once they got in there, started to fire. It all happened automatically. Yeah. I've got the gunner's book, some of that stuff. You know, now, the bolter, you had like a cable or something you had to pull to, to, to crank yeah. it the oh. first time? Yeah, yeah, to get the. Uh, there was a lot of mechanism down there that uh, you had to fire, the, you had your feet. It was the way you handled the sight and, and uh, distances and stuff because uh, it was really kind of involved. And, uh, you know, Ralph Pettijohn uh, yeah. said a 20 millimeter shell went right through. That's the oxygen. Yeah. The, th the shell went right through that thing while he was in the ball. Okay. And you know, it's amazing he's alive oh, when you yeah. think about that. Oh yeah. Stuff like that happens all the time. <clears throat> so these are actual like the cables move. You think? Yeah. This is for the you know the elevators and the. Aileron and stuff like that. So it was an entirely mechanical movement of cable. Oh, yeah. There wasn't much electronic no. uh, or electric. No. I suppose the only hydraulics was the getting the landing gear up and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hydraulic fluid was for the brakes. And uh, now uh, this tail is What I would do once we got to 10,000 feet, we would go to our battle stations. We had to get on oxygen. Uh -huh. So I'd push my parachute ahead of me and wiggle past the tailwheel and get up into my spot, sit on the bicycle seat, put this to strap myself in, hook up, you know, my communications, my oxygen, my uh, heated suit and all that stuff. And every movement was just a measured movement. And then, and then begin to scan the sky. I had a phenomenal view because that horizontal stabilizer was behind me. Yeah. And, and uh, in this model especially, the old pinched model EF was harder to see off. So the, the bombardier and I had two of the best views in the plane. This guy had a half a view. The pilot was looking out at, at, the, at the wing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then I could, you could see I could look through here and look through the radio room. You could see that's the radio room floor. Yeah. I, I could see that he was down. And patching, he was an armament gunner and he was on this side over here. And this guy here was a heavy set guy. Thornton, in fact, when, when we crashed, we all, those of us back here, fire and dust all over the place, and we rushed, and fortunately, we were able to open that door. It wasn't messed up. And uh, Thornton was the first one out, that big guy, and he fell down, and we all went over him. And uh, I ran out and onto the airfield. We were right next to the landing site. Uh -huh. <laughs> and guess what? I turned and, and ran right into the radio guy. He was right behind me. We fell down. The, I'm the only guy I know that was that chased down the runway by a B-7. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a sight. <laughs> yeah, and then I looked back. I can't explain the carnage that was going on. And even shells were exploding because of the heat. And Thornton was laying down there. And so I ran. I asked him south one day, what did I do when we looked back? He said, you ran back and got it. I needed, <laughs> I needed him to say that. <laughs> so, but I couldn't. And then the firemen came along and grabbed him and me to get out of here, you know, and pulled us out of there. Yeah. And they had to, you saw the film, I gave that to you. Yeah, yeah, and, wow. Yeah, and uh, it, uh, Total carnage and chaos with that, all the fire and everything going on, the smoke. Just think of that, my uh, Davis, uh, uh, hatch and I, an oxygen bottle I think exploded and he was a torch and he yelled it well you saw that and he yelled us south help me I'm on south ran over and rolled him in the grass and south caught on fire that's how hmm. he had, got to hospital the pilot and co-pilot both went out those little tiny windows up there and dropped on the wing yeah I think the co-pilot it wasn't our regular co-pilot we didn't always fly with the same crew most of the time uh, south kicked his hair, parachute harness to get him out Mm -hmm. He got, he did so many things. That guy should have had at least a silver star. Mm -hmm. He got soldiers' medals and stuff like that, Purple Heart. But uh, then uh, there it was, okay, on fire, everything. Well, uh, they, they, uh, we went, we went to the dispensary and, and they checked us all out. Ogle was all cut up, his face from, running, and uh, went back to our tent and. Ogle has sutures in the Back in 1997, he was at a meeting or some, uh, I think maybe the VFW. He said, would you get those scars during I said, did you get the Purple Heart? No, no. He said, I, they, they talked to us about it. He said, well, you earned it. 
So he did, and I wrote a letter, and I and I have a picture of him with the sutures. And he stuff. got the he Purple got Heart. The purple heart oh, okay, that's he's great. Like, Isn't that something? Yeah. And uh, he earned it. After the war, he uh, worked with the uh, state and uh, jumped on on parachutes, parachuted on fires, you know. See. Really? Yeah. Huh. Oh yeah. And made quite a few jumps. And working for the DNR, well, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, the pilot uh, went home. He was. Catholic, and he had, uh, I think, nine or ten kids. I got a neat picture of him with his family. He was gone, gone before my reunion. Yeah, go ahead. And they, we take off with 12,500 pound bombs, and they weren't armed because they had a couple procedures to arm. He used the bombardier or the armament gunner, who was patching who over here, and there, would go to the bomb bay before we got to Elder Two. We'd have to stay in our positions with our ushers. And he'd take out the cotter feet, the mm -hmm. nose feet, and in the feet. Mm -hmm. So he had to have 24 of those in his pocket. So after we landed, he'd have to turn those in to prove that that those bombs were armed when they went out of the ship. Huh, okay. Well, they st still weren't armed until the bombs away. Then the shackles would open, and there was a wire that ran through the nose and the tail with a copper wire that was hooked up on the shackle that stayed there. Mm -hmm. And that armed those two fuses. Yeah. And after some 500 revolutions, those uh, they would drop off, and the bomb was armed. Yeah. And it was set for. So they had a couple of protections, oh, so yeah. it didn't go off on yeah. impact or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should go to the back and take a look at the. Yeah. It's cooler outside, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to get out first? Just to think that be able just to hop out these things. Hey, you're doing great. Here, if you need a hand, let me know. <clears throat> yeah, back in the day, you just f go right through those. Oh, yeah. You just jump right up. <laughs> now I can hardly get out. Well, <laughs> yeah, thank you. No. Yeah, let's go back in there. So the G had the, the distinctive... Uh, uh, like the chin turret and the, what's, what's the, the, were you in a G? This is, no, uh, yeah, this is the G, the okay. Cheyenne turret, they call it. it made the Cheyenne, Wyoming. Okay. And uh, the F was pinched down. The F had a, the, the site was outside of the aircraft. It was a okay. posted ring. But this one was all lit up. Was, uh, was it, was it canvas covered or was that a really early one? Yeah, they had cam canvas uh, around the gun so that it, air couldn't get in there, you know. Yeah. And then I had all this, I had my throat mic, like a garter, yeah. that I would, so I could communicate. And then the, the heated suit was hooked in. And uh, all this, all these things, you know, that you had to do. So I was pretty much uh, isolated and I, I couldn't, uh, there was an emergency bottle right over my head. I don't know if there's one in there or not. I know they got something on good for maybe 10 minutes. Uh -huh. In the event my line was severed, I could reach over there. If my blinker stopped, that's a signal to get, get some help because within a couple of minutes you're gone, you know, it doesn't yeah. take long without oxygen. So you reach over and snap that in and uh, get out of there and go back to the uh, uh, main source. I think there was a few sources where you could plug in that would generally use, you know. Yeah. And uh, the day that we had to dive to save the radio guy, my ball turret gunner wrote a book about that, and he got a little different story in there that I remember. You know how we see it from different angles, yeah. yeah. And he said that the circuitry went out on that side. Well, that means some others would have been out of oxygen, too. And uh, I thought that Faust had a piece of shrapnel cut his line. What What did the circuit, oh, you mean the air circuits, you mean? Not, they weren't electrical. You're just talking about the air line yeah. was cut? Well, I mean, there's a bottle with oxygen in it. Okay. It was under pressure. Yeah. And it was hooked up to the. Okay. And uh, there was a little blinker there that every time you took a breath, you could see you were getting an oxygen. Oh, okay, okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I've told you that story, but I did. <laughs> I would, I, when the shells were exploding over the target, always they did. Everybody put on their flak suits and their parachutes and yeah. talked to each other. And, and we would kid around this. We were young, you know. And, and okay. So I would wiggle past my ammunition boxes. There's a escape hatch over there. You see it? I'm the only one that had his own escape hatch, right there. I the, could the, one, the one right in front yeah. there? Right here. Oh, right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 
and there's a little handle I could turn. There were two little red things you had, the pins you had to pull out, turn the handle, and grip the out. So you could you could bail out and go right off from that. there. Yeah. Okay. Which I enjoyed. That was a good feeling. Yeah. And uh, did you ever have to bail out? No, I came close. There's several times that we thought we might have to, but we didn't. <clears throat> well, then I did something else, and she'll appreciate this. <laughs> My mother on Christmas Day, we went over Brooks in Chukotalaki, and Captain uh, Brensing, uh, he had to be leading the group because they called him Fearless Joe Brensing, <laughs> and. and uh, I got a position behind the P-51. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, those uh, Tuskegee guys escorted us. I was an Yeah. Red yeah. Tails. Yeah. Uh, okay. seven, of my, seven of my missions, I, I put them together. That they had, and I'd see them go by, but I didn't know, I didn't know they were black. I, you know what I mean? We were just little pieces of history. Yeah. We yeah. didn't know what was going on. No. We just wanted to get home and do our job. Well, anyway, so back to that, that incident. Uh, finally, I had my mother give me a wristwatch, and I, w I would always time it. Once you get on the bomb run and the IP, it always was dangerous, shells explode. But it was from 5 to 15 minutes, you were over the t where you, the bomb site was down here. Okay. So we had to ride down, drop our bombs, and then rally off the target. Well, I'd get there, and I would have my oxygen hose stretched around the ammunition box, because there was a blinker there. Every time I took a breath, I could see that I was getting oxygen, see. And I, I was a bit of a character. You can almost discern that now. <laughs> and, and, and I would fantasize to kind of push the fear away that that was my girlfriend back in Ortonville kissing me. <laughs> I, I'm 19 years old. See? So then, uh, bombs away. I'd hear that. The ship would lift. We always usually carried 12, 500 bomb bombs, and we'd bomb between 25 and 28,000 feet. Then we'd rally off the target and head for home. And uh, over uh, Czechoslovakia, one, uh, over Yugoslavia, let's see. Yeah, Yugoslavia one day, we got out of enemy territory. We got down to where we could get out of oxygen. We went back to the radio room for our lunch. See, and lunch was frozen Spam sandwiches and ice cold coffee because we're 50 below zero up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one day, our radio man, he, uh, he was the one that was in charge of it. And there was an ammunition box where we had the lunch. And so he'd always pour it out, surprise, and we'd always get the same thing. And then one day there was nothing in there, surprise. So Patchy, the one of the waste gunners, grabbed his parachute and headed for the waste. You know, <laughs> and all of a sudden he also, he found it underneath the blanket underneath his table. So he, this is the crazy stuff. S sudden we, discovery when his yeah. parachute's gone the way out. Huh? And, uh, Landing was, like I was telling him, like getting your life back. And uh, they gave us two shots of whiskey. There you go. And I didn't drink. I was on the St. Louis County Rescue Squad as a deputy sheriff. It's okay. supposed to get in the military. And you know, when you're out there, you know, putting your self in harm's way to help other people. Yeah. We come back from airplane crash and drowning, whatever. We always would sit down, we'd all have a nice big stiff drink of whiskey and oh, yeah. sit and talk about it, oh, yeah. debrief, we oh, had to sure. do it, we had to do it. Yeah, you betcha. I didn't drink, I was a teetotal because I was just a kid, you know. So I poured it in a vino bottle and hid it behind the clothes rack in the tent. But one day I came in and my engineer was sitting on his cot, had my jug between his knees and he said, hey Parker, how would you like a drink on you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we were. Well, I tell you what, if we had one right here now, I'd toast you for saving all our lives and keeping Hitler from running the world. Oh, so. yeah, yeah.